Good morning Santa Barbara, in the news today, a spokesperson for the Duke of Sussex announced last month that To advance Harry a number of his patronages and philanthropic initiatives. The Prince's spokesperson last also shared that, that the Royal will be in New York City during the UN General Assembly High Level Week, runs September 23 through September 27. Former Secretary Hillary Clinton and Clinton Foundation Vice Chair Chelsea Clinton announced on September 5th that the Duke of Sussex will be among the leaders from across government, business, philanthropy, and civil society who will participate God in the meeting this month. the work of his and wife the Duchess of Sussex, Meghan Markle's their non-profit organization, the Archie... Landed, yes, the crowd has landed. Prince Harry he is in New York City, baby. Um, the Duke of Sussex is here, um, as you all know. It's a very busy good morning, New York. This is Carlos Perez coming to you. It's Q102.5 New York City, baby. There's a royalty already in the city. It seems like the eagle landed early this morning. The In the heart of Southern Africa lies Angola, a country with a rich history and a painful past. For centuries, Angola was a Portuguese colony, its people subjected to foreign rule and exploitation. But in 1975, after a long struggle for independence, Angola finally broke free from colonial chains. However, this hard-won freedom came at a terrible cost. As the Portuguese departed, they left behind a power vacuum that quickly erupted into a brutal civil war. Three main factions, each representing different ethnic groups and ideologies, fought for control of the country. The MPLA, UNITA, UNITA, and FNLA, turned their guns on each other, and soon foreign powers joined the fray, turning Angola into a Cold War battleground. In this chaotic conflict, a sinister weapon became ubiquitous, the landmine. Cheap, effective, and devastatingly cruel. Landmines were scattered across Angola like deadly seeds. The warring factions used them to protect territories, deny access to resources, and sow terror among civilian populations. By the time the war ended in 2002, an estimated 10 to 15 million landmines laid hidden beneath Angola soil, waiting silently for unsuspecting victims. Enter the Halo Trust, a non-profit organization dedicated to removing the deadly legacy of war. Founded in 1988, Halo began its work in Angola in 1994, tackling the enormous task of clearing these hidden killers. The Halo Trust, founded in 1988, is a global humanitarian organization dedicated to clearing landmines and unexploded ordnance in post-conflict zones. Its mission is to restore land to communities affected by war, allowing them to rebuild their lives 
free from the dangers of landmines. Over the years, Halo has expanded its operations to over 25 countries, including Angola, Afghanistan, and Cambodia, making it one of the leading organizations in landmine clearance. It's an enormous privilege for me to be invited here to Angola in order to assist the Red Cross in its campaign to ban once and for all anti-personal landmines. It is my sincere hope that by working together in the next few days, we shall focus world attention on this vital, but until now largely neglected, issue. In January of 1997, the landmines were the furthest thing from our brains. We were getting ready for the inauguration of Bill Clinton's second term. We were wrapped up in our own domestic politics. Then all of a sudden, every channel, all the news in the United States, and it was Princess Diana. Just such a riveting presence to see the most famous woman in the world in one of the most dangerous places on the planet. As somebody who works for Halo, who's donned that same body armor that she wore on that day and has taken a step into a minefield and felt that terror and trepidation for the first time, I am sure that it was terrifying for her. But I know that she understood the importance of her taking that step, understood that she could bring this issue to a world stage. Ma'am, the government minister's home has said you're a loose cannon by supporting this campaign. And do you have any reaction to that? Virginia, I'm only trying to highlight a problem that's going on all around the world. That's all. I think there's no doubt at all that uh, the advice that Diana Princess Wells has been given uh, is naive and lacking. I think that there are certain areas that uh, her people don't fully understand, and that's the difference, for example, between anti-personnel mines and anti-tank mines. If she'd been better briefed, she could have actually made a lot more of this. Let's start to, to grow again. Ladies and gentlemen, I must begin by saying how warmly I welcome this conference on landmines, conveyed by the Mines Advisory Group and the Landmine Survivors Network. It is so welcome because the world is too little aware of the waste life, limb and land which anti-personal landmines are causing amongst some of the poorest people on earth. Indeed, until my journey to Angola earlier this year, of which I'm going to speak this morning, I was largely unaware of it too. For the mine is a stealthy killer. Long after conflict is ended, its innocent victims die or are wounded singly in countries of which we hear little. Their lonely fate is never reported. The world, with its many other preoccupations, remains largely unmoved by a death roll of something like 800 people every month, many of them women and children. Those who are not Kirite, and they number around 1,200 a month, suffer terrible injuries and a handicap for life. I went to Angola earlier this year in January with the British Red Cross, a country where there are 15 million landmines in a population gentlemen, of 10 million, with a desire of drawing world attention to this vital, but hitherto largely neglected issue. Some people chose to interpret my visit as a political statement, but it was not. I am not a political figure, and as I said at the time, and I'd like to reiterate now, my interests are humanitarian. 
That is why I felt drawn to this human tragedy. That is why I wanted to play my part in working towards a worldwide ban on these weapons. Princess Diana brought global attention to the Angola's plight and the landmines issue at large. The beloved royal, known for her humanitarian work, shocked the world in that powerful moment when she walked through a partially cleared minefield protected only by a visor and body armor. She met with landmine survivors, many of them children, and listened to their stories of loss and resilience. Diana's visit was more than a photo opportunity. It was a clarion call to the world. Her advocacy for a global ban on landmines was seen as controversial, and she was relentlessly criticized by politicians and the press in the United Kingdom. Not much has changed as her son, Prince Harry, who has inherited the spirit of compassion and a caring soul from his mother, take up many of her causes. And he is relentlessly criticized by the UK toxic media. I've had hands-on experiences before, but this working trip has been slightly different. I've had more contact with people and there's been less formalities. It's the type of program I've been looking for for some time and I'm very happy to have done and achieved what we have here in the Red Cross. You knew the statistics before you came, you were briefed on them, but has the reality of that been more shocking than you expected? Yes, I knew the statistics, but putting a face to those figures brought the reality home to me. Like when I met Sandra, the 13-year-old girl, two days ago, who had lost her leg. And for people like her, you know, the rest of her life would be very different. But we must stop landmines if we can, a great, great deal. I've seen the people affected by landmines. I've seen the landmines themselves. Angola is an example of what the Red Cross can achieve around the world, given the sort of cooperation that we have seen that exists between the Red Cross and the NGOs and the Angolan authorities. Can I just ask one question that's just a sound? Um, this has been quite a different trip, this is the new hands-on role in the seek the future. Well, yeah. I don't know, I already answered yes, it, Jenny. Yeah, Were you surprised at the political furore that developed as a result of your visit to mm -hmm. I saw it merely as a distraction because I'm not a political figure, I, I, I am a humanitarian and always have been, and always will be. <laughs> Wonderful group of people uh, working out of our public service who have helped organize this conference, and I think you'd agree it's a, been superb. We have reasons to feel pleased about some of the very direct results. Uh, as I came to the podium, the 121st country has signed the treaty. Princess Diana became the face of the anti-landmine movement in the 1990s. Her famous visits to Angola and Bosnia, where she walked through active minefields and met landmine victims, drew global attention to the humanitarian crisis caused by landmines. These highly publicized visits helped humanize the issue and spurred governments, including Canada, to take action. Diana's commitment to the cause gives the anti-landmine movement unprecedented visibility. She highlighted the suffering of civilians, especially children, injured or killed by landmines long after conflicts had ended. This advocacy 
helped bring about a surge in international support for banning landmines. While Princess Diana was not directly involved in the diplomatic process that led to the Ottawa Treaty, her advocacy work complemented Canada's efforts. Canadian Foreign Minister Lord Axworthy and the Canadian government were instrumental in negotiating and hosting in 1997 treaty that banned landmines. The treaty became known as the Ottawa Process and marked a significant step in global disarmament efforts. Diana's influence on public opinion undoubtedly supported the Canadian government's diplomatic push for the treaty. Her high-profile involvement lent moral weight to the campaign, helping to sway international opinion in favor of the ban. Many have credited her hard work for putting pressure on world leaders to act. Princess Diana did not live to see the fruit of her dedicated hard work. She died in a car crash in Paris, France on August 31st, 1997. Just about three months later, the treaty was signed in Ottawa, Canada. Her role was wildly acknowledged in the aftermath. She is often credited with being one of the driving forces behind the global awareness of the landmine crisis. Her contributions were recognized posthumously by organizations like the International Campaign to Ban Landmines, the ICBL, which won the Nobel Prize Peace Prize in 1997. The recognition extended to her advocacy work, which played a pivotal role in the global anti-landmine campaign. Princess Diana was not of royal content to remain hidden behind palace walls or play it safe. Despite the relentless attacks and misrepresentation by the UK toxic media, she consistently used her platform to bring attention to marginalized people and critical issues that had long been overlooked. Whether it was her work with landmine victims, AIDS awareness, or her compassionate engagement with the homeless, Diana's courage and humanity transcended her title. Through her fearless advocacy, she not only saved lives, but also changed the world, challenging what it meant to be a royal and leaving a legacy of compassion and global awareness. It's safe to say that we see that same drive, that same intention and execution in her youngest son and his wife, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, Prince Harry and Meghan Markle. Hey there, having fun with today's episode? Good, because we are too. Now, before you dive back in, let's take a quick moment. Grab that mouse and show the like button some love. Go on, it doesn't bite. And while you're at it, hit subscribe and ring that bell. Because trust me, you don't wanna miss out on our next juicy breakdown. It helps our channel thrive. And honestly, who doesn't want more of the Sussex truth bombs? So, what are you waiting for? 
let's keep the good vibes rolling. Thanks for hanging with us. In 1997, the world watched as Princess Diana took a bold and unforgettable step into a minefield in Angola, wearing protective gear and walking around the deadly remnants of war. Her visit to Angola wasn't just a symbolic act, it was a statement of courage, compassion, and a desire to bring global attention to the horrific impact of landmines. Princess Diana's legacy in this fight didn't end there. Over two decades later, her son, Prince Harry, has continued her mission with the Halo Trust, a humanitarian organization devoted to clearing landmines and other explosive remnants of conflict. A staggering 60 million people around the world still live in fear and risk of landmines. We cannot turn our backs on them and leave a job half done. Prince Harry's involvement with the Halo Trust has been deeply personal, honoring his mother's work while carving out his own legacy of compassion. In 2013, Harry visited Angola with Halo, witnessing firsthand the devastating effects of landmines on communities struggling to recover from decades of conflict. But it was in 2019, during an emotional visit to Angola, that Harry made a powerful gesture. He retraced his mother's footsteps through the very same minefield that she had walked in 1997. Prince Harry's advocacy with the Halo Trust goes beyond ceremonial gestures. He has actively used his platform to draw attention to the long-term consequences of landmines, which not only maim and kill, but also keep entire communities trapped in cycles of fear and poverty. Landmines prevent families from accessing farmland, children from attending schools, and communities from rebuilding after conflict. Harry has consistently spoken about the need to raid the world of these deadly remnants of war and has worked to secure political backing and financial support for deminding efforts. In his speech and public engagements, Prince Harry often emphasizes the landmine clearance is not just about removing physical hazards. It's about giving people back their lives. He frequently champions the cause, reminding global leaders that landmines remain a deadly legacy in many regions, that the work of organizations like Halo is far from over. This commitment to the Halo Trust is not just about following in his mother's footstep, but about building a future where families can live without the fear of unexploded ordinance. The fight against landmines is a battle not only for safety, but for dignity. These hidden killers don't just threaten lives, they destroy livelihoods. Landmines make farmland inaccessible, roads unusable, and schools unreachable. They are an invisible barrier that keeps communities trapped in the past, unable to move forward from the scars of war. Every minefield cleared represents a new beginning for a community, a family, or a child who can now walk to school safely. Prince Harry's dedication to the Halo Trust and its mission keeps this humanitarian issue at the forefront of global awareness. The, orga the organization's work, amplified by the legacy of both Princess Diana and Prince Harry serves as a reminder that even in the aftermath of conflict, hope and renewal are possible. Every landmine cleared is a step towards healing the wounds of war, one community at a time. As Prince, 
Harry continues to champion the Halo Trust, his voice remains a powerful force for change, echoing the compassion and courage his mother embodied. Through his advocacy, Harry ensures that the world does not forget the victims of landmines and that the mission to clear them continues, offering a safer and brighter future for generations to come. We wish the Duke of Sussex, Prince Harry, the very best and productive meeting when he meets with the Halo Trust here in New York. Okay, well, I, I really hope you all enjoyed the um, episode today. I hope you got something out of, um, if you didn't know much about uh, the Halo Trust, you know more about it and know um, how Diana, Princess Diana, sorry, got involved and her legacy in all of this. I just find it, and this is why I asked these two questions here, really, you know, what are your thoughts on Princess Diana's bravery? Because remember, at this point, she was, wasn't was in the fold anymore with the royal family. I, I think the divorce had finished already. She was dating um, uh, the al um guy. And she wanted to just do good. Same thing like what Harry and Meghan say, right? Here is a problem. If I can shine light on it, it will make a difference. And I will say, when that politician, she saw he, when he, he was like, oh, it's obvious the people who were briefing her didn't brief her correctly and being such a pompous jack. Politics have a lot of bureaucracy and layers to it. When you have someone just with that common touch, it's just, Here's a problem. I'm going to shine a light on it. And I'm going to say, we need to stop this because basically there are mines in the land and it, it's killing people. And I have no doubt that what she did at the time she did it saved many lives. And, you know, by the end of that year, the treaty was actually signed. Just amazing. But what I found very interesting is it's a history repeating itself, right? They, they're, they're doing the same thing again, and they're doing it basically to the two good people, Megan and Harry. It's like on that island, the people in power, they don't know, they, they don't understand good. They don't understand when you're out there just to do good, to help people to have purpose, to have an impact, right? They won't just show up and cut a ribbon and wave your hands and then you leave and you, and you just laugh at the people. You're like, ha, 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 look at them. <laughs> that's not, that's not Prince Harry and Meghan. That's not Princess Diana, right? Now, do you see the similarities between Diana's treatment and the Sussexes? I just kept looking at them going, oh my gosh, even, even from the, the, the newspaper, like, head-ins and, and all of this stuff, just ridiculous. And they do the same things, the same, um, I'm going to call it the same soap opera. It's it's, it's the same storyline because it is a soap opera. That, that, that's how I actually have an idea to do, the, to do like, a whole thing and, and looking at the whole monarchy and the U.K., as the monarchy is the soap opera. It's a soap opera that has been running for like a thousand years, right? And the population, the people are the audience. Now you have some people who are just like, they're plugged into this show. Like they, they, they will die for this show. Then you have people who come and go, come and go, right? But because the show has been running for a thousand plus years, everyone can identify with it at one point or another. It's a soap opera. And the tabloids assign the role that you will be playing. You know? Okay, so in, in the chat, tell me what you think. Um, that'd be fantastico. Uh, next, well, <laughs> I saw this picture for well, um, well Child. So as, as you all know, Prince 
Harry is going there, excuse me, <coughs> by the end of the month, um, which I think is fantastic. I love then when he goes to the charities in, in the UK and he shows up and stuff like that. I mean, and, and there's such love there. There's such love. And I just, especially with these kind of uh, um, charities with kids and stuff like that, it really, it's really touching. And I saw this picture and I went, Hmm. Okay. Okay. I see. What, I. I. I see. I see what you're doing. I see. I. Yeah. I. I, I see. I see you. I see what you're selling. <laughs> He's like, <laughs> I'm like, dude. That that whole pose. That whole confidence. That that one arm on the, on the um, podium and and the other one. It's just like I'm like très chic and and très confident. He just looks fantastic. Good for him. Just, just be in your best, your best place of joy, my friend. And um, Tyler Perry, Tyler Perry. Before Tyler Perry, um, here's some other pictures that I have um, of um, when Megan was um, there one one year, and I just I love to watch the interaction between Prince Prince Harry and the kids. He's such like everyone has said it. Like he was just a sign to be a dad like i just you guys just have that energy right and he has and the kids just they get him and he gets them and i there are people like that i think i'm one of them kids just get me <laughs> most kids <laughs> and i love them and they love me and we have a great time um so these these are just wonderful pictures i thought now now to mr tyler perry mr tyler perry had a birthday um, so I think his birth was the day before, um, uh, two days before, actually, two days before Prince Harry's. So his was on the th Friday and Prince Harry's was on the Sunday. So I guess they all went to the mansion where Meghan and Harry stayed, you know, for a while when Uncle um, Perry came and rescued them. Well, Godfather, I guess. And they all had a great time. So Oprah was there, Gail, King, and so on. You know what I love? I love that Megan is smiling and, and laughing. But, here is my but. <laughs> Harry always has, and I couldn't find it on, on time, but there is, there is a video. And he's like this little kid. And he's holding hands with, with another kid. And they're walking in, I think, going to to class or coming from class or something like that, like like kindergarten or something. And he has his head as they walk in, tilted, looking at someone, like looking at a camera or something. And the look he's given that person, and he's just walking, but he's he, he, his head keeps looking at the person until he he has to put he has to put his head straight. That guy always has that look. It's sort of like eagle eye. Right, he knows exactly where you are. It's, it's like he's like Robo, not the Robo. What is it called? Uh, not well. I guess Terminator, but it's almost like he has, you know, this sort of computerized brain, and he's just like, okay, okay, two over there, five over there, six, okay, two, four, okay, that one has. It's just like he's scanning everything, right, and. It's not that he only learned that in the military, but it's something that I think is very innate here that he had since he was a kid. Because there's times when I, I, I watch a video or something and he's in it as a child, and that look is, is, is there. He'll just give you that piercing look to that person like, who are you? Why are you here? Why are you pointing that into my face? He's just, he's just awesome. Well, I'm so happy to, you know, that they had a great time. It looks like they had a great time. Um, I couldn't find it on time. I wanted to just speak briefly on the um, the king and the brother send in birthday wishes. I I this is my thought on that. Return to sender, and I can't believe I'm saying that. Like, I really can't believe I'm saying that. You know why? I'll tell you why. You, it's like, it's like someone buying a Hallmark card, okay? And you know some of the cards, they have like 
you know, have stuff on in it. Like, you know, um, you were born to be wild, right? So imagine someone buys the card inside it says you were born to be wild. All right. And they just sign the bottom and hand it to you. No thought, no extra nothing. No, you are my best friend or, or I, 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 nothing. So they're so, this is not, this is not an olive branch and, and an octane branch. It's not an olive pit. It's not, it's not a tea seed that I read. It's not, it's, it is just, it's not even the minimum. It is just someone yeah, on Charles's side, communication team or whatever, just said, hey, your son is going to be 40 on Sunday. We should at least say happy birthday to him. Okay, whatever you want to do, just whatever. But don't make it too like whatever. No, I'm saying all we're going to do is say happy birthday. Do not, not even call him his name. Just say happy birthday. Okay. We're going to say happy birthday to the, to the, to the Duke of Sussex. <laughs> I, I mean, come on. Come on. You know, 40, 40 is a big deal. Right? And the estrangeness between them all. There, there, there is, look, there, ever, ever so often, ever so often, because I am human, because I'm a thinking, walking, feeling person with emotions, there are times where I, I look at this entire situation and I can pinpoint places where, I don't want to say I can justify what the person did, but I can understand how they have been conditioned to behave the way they behave. I'll give an example and don't come for me, people, okay? Kate. Oh, sorry. Catherine. Catherine has been told forever by her parents, especially her mother, you need to, you know, up. You need to, you need to take us up. Going on up, right? She did what she needed to do in order to have William as a boyfriend. After a while, because you've been giving away the milk, the cheese, the, the coconut, everything, right? You got stale because let me tell you something. I, <laughs> oh, I, am I going there? Am I going to go there? Why not? I look at Catherine and no offense to her. Maybe I've got it wrong. And, but Catherine looks like someone who would just like, Oh my gosh, I don't want to say it. I don't want to say it. Okay, I'm not going to say it. She looks like someone who will just be like, are you finished? <laughs> well, well, I look at Megan and Harry and I'm like, gosh, I need, I need that tape. <laughs> please forgive me. Baby Jesus, please forgive me. They just look like fun people, right? That would be adventurous and 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 like I don't know, role play a little. Like the other two, like can you imagine them role playing? Um, I'm gonna pretend to be Megan, and you can pretend to be. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> <sighs> I can't believe I just said that. <clears throat> I'm so sorry. Do forgive me. I am. Listen, baby Jesus. Like, listen. <laughs> it was. A, it was just me. Whatever. But here's my point. My point was, she's been since since she was of a, of a certain age. She's been like nag, 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 nag. She gets. She takes a year off, waits for him, goes to his unit, unit. He's going to, like, whatever she needs to do, she does it. You know, he treats her the way he wants to treat her, blah, blah, blah. She hangs on, she hangs on, she hangs on because she's like, yeah, I'm going to be the one, I'm going to be the one. Then he's like, yeah, no. 
no, 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 no. And then after all of that, right, he goes and he's like, okay, what can I get? What can I get? What can I get? And the people who he thinks he can get, they're like, mm, no, 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 you're not, you're not a good ride. You're not a good, like, you know, you're not a good amusement park. You're just a scary amusement park. We want fun amusement park. So he doesn't get anything. So he, he has to look back, right? He has to look back and go, damn. Okay, at least I'm going to get myself some pulled pork once in a while or something if I have to do this one. So there is anger there. There's anger, there's resentment, there is, there is, there's everything you can think of. It's there. It's there. Because he doesn't love her. She doesn't love him. She hates his guts. Because not only that, the things that he's done to her in public. Right? So come on. So they're just misery, miserables, all of them. And to them, it is a soap opera. And as I said, ever so often, once in a while, I see something like, like the other day I was looking, I was looking at William and I kept thinking, dude, I don't, I don't even want to know what's going on in your head. Like there's probably so much crap going on in your head. I was like, the beard thing, you, you look you look like a like a hobo. You look like someone who's, I don't know, whatever. But who cares? If it makes you feel good, makes you feel good. I'm like, you look super thin and not healthy thin. You don't look like you're working out to lose weight. It looks like, it looks like you're not eating, right? Or like someone puts you on like a diet, let, one lettuce a day. That's it. I'm like, wow. Because he, he doesn't have, I think the intellectual capacity or the analytical or creative capacity to be what he wants to be. And his partner, no offense to her, is useless. Now you see, Harry has a partner that's, that, that went, hang on a second, why is that again? Well, why don't we do it like this? this would, and, and Harry's like, holy cow, that's amazing. Yes, let's do it like that, right? And there's other times where Harry's like, hey, so um, I'm thinking that we do this, this, and this. What do you think? Right? And Megan is like, I think that might work. While the two of them, like I, whoever said that, you know, they couldn't find like one brain cell or something between the two of them. I'm just paraphrasing. There was an article that was written a little while, while back. They're boring. Absolutely boring people. And there's nothing wrong with being boring, but they're like envious of the people who are not. And what they do is then give all their wrath and uh, all, all their anger towards those, those, those people. So my point being, listen, I, once in a while, when I say I'm feeling kind of, I'm like, oh, I feel sorry for them a little bit. Or I'm like, and then I've, I, I remind myself of all the stuff that has happened. And I was like, nah, 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 nah. You've got what's coming to you. Everything that is coming to you is yours. You couldn't send your brother a proper birthday wish. I'm, I, I, like these people have zero understanding of how to mend relationships. Thank goodness that Prince Harry kind of like just... Oh, okay, I'm going to stop that. I'll stop now. There's a couple of things I want you guys just to see, watch, listen, and um, love you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being in the chat. And be good to yourselves, okay? All right, okay. Bye.